Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Vice Mayor Jim Waring, and joining me on today's show is a special guest, Councilwoman Thelda Williams. Councilwoman, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for inviting me. This <laughs> is exciting. No, it is exciting. I, it's something I've wanted to do for a while, and you know, it, it's just, you've had such a long and illustrious tenure with the city of Phoenix, so many accomplishments. I just wanted to do a retrospective of kind of like what you've seen, what's changed. It's been, if you forgive me for saying it, 30 years since you first got elected, although you haven't been on the council that entire time. So you can talk a little bit. Uh, we were just talking uh, before we went on camera about uh, elections. Obviously, consolidated elections was something we worked on. But most people, including me, until I started to delve into the issue, didn't realize the elections were in October. And then the runoffs were, I guess, the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving, which I'm makes no sense to me at all. But yes, but you didn't have a runoff. But so you, you got into this. Why? What prompted you run for city council? Well, I was very active in the district and we had a citizens committee and uh, it was kind of a progression and when the councilman wanted to retire, uh, he asked me if I'd run for it. And then you won flat out? So you didn't have yeah. the runoff after Thanksgiving? No. I don't I, know how you campaign on Thanksgiving, I, <laughs> but, but apparently people did it according to the records. So. No, no. Uh, it, when he left, it threw me right into the midst of everything that's going on because October is a busy month mm -hmm. and I didn't have a clue. And you told me he retired to take another job. Yeah. The person retired, so you, you immediately took over. I, I was in much the same situation, but at least I was sort of prepared for that. It sounds like you just walked right into it and uh, started right ground running in October of 1989. From 1989, yes. Yeah. I'm the historian at now at City Hall. <laughs> well, I have to ask, so what was different about running a race then? What was different about City Hall? I guess I imagine the easy answer would be everything, but what do you remember? Running a race um, was much the same. Um, fewer people in the district. Yeah. So, I mean- Phoenix I was much smaller. Yeah, it was much smaller. But um, City Hall was different. Council was much different. I, I, Marvin Andrews was still the city manager. Um, so this predates Frank Fairbanks, who had a long career at the city. Yeah. So it was interesting times at a huge learning curve. The very first meeting, voting on GPEC, I didn't know what GPEC was. <laughs> and it was establishing it. It was the first go around to so even So it's 30 years it. old. So it's 30 years okay. old now. So, but it, the council, um, was makeup was different. Uh, There's still eight members plus a mayor. Correct. Right? Jerry Goddard was mayor. And it was interesting times because it was a challenge. Everything was, was going to be new. I mean, arts program, Terry launched. Hmm. Um, we launched a um, better transportation program. First time we had an interest in international business and air flights. Uh, it, you know, fire department was smaller. Uh, police department was as normal, under question. <laughs> <laughs> Some things don't change. Some things do not change. <laughs> uh, and we didn't have the subcommittee drama that we have nowadays. You had to be educated on every department. Hmm. So you were constantly in the learning mode and because every department come through you where now it's through the subcommittees and they really make decisions on a lot of things i, I don't know about you but i don't always hear it till i see it on a formal agenda i don't have the details but back then you did you had to know it and ask your questions right away yeah. well we had the same thing at the legislature with if you were on a committee then you knew a lot about the bills that went through Jude because you'd heard the hearings, you'd heard the citizen comments and so forth. So it isn't, uh, you know, now isn't that much different from what you have there. But that's interesting that you say that, that most things just came straight to the council and they made the decision because you're right. I mean, there are big issues that are somewhat fleshed out at least uh, before they ever get to some of the members of the councils. So. Right, so, but interesting enough, I mean, there was more communication amongst the council members and we did a lot of compromising so that um, was not unusual to have a 9-0 vote mm -hmm. because everybody got a piece of what they wanted. So it worked pretty well for most things. Didn't always end up that way, but Do you remember how big the budget was? Um, no, I think we were about 
close to a billion. A billion. So it still it hasn't grown that much when you consider how much bigger the city is. But I think that was everything. Well, that was everything, including the airport <clears throat> and water and everything. Okay, well, then that is a different change. So. And uh, it was very interesting to have uh, property tax was lower. We didn't have as much money. And then the recession hit. America West was the primary carrier at mm -hmm. Sky Harbor, and it went, was going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So we had to get heavily involved in that to keep them afloat, to keep a major carrier at the airport. I mean, it was... It was they went on to bigger and better things, by yeah, the way, for those watching at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, park system was much smaller, but we created new parks and uh, built the, or planned the community center. So there was a lot of good things happening in the neighborhoods. And then you capped off your first term as a councilwoman as mayor. Am I correct about that? Wasn't that uh, about 1994 yes. when, so I think it was Paul Johnson left to run for governor, is that correct? Yes, it's true. And it, uh, I assume you were then vice mayor and then became mayor? Is that how that I'm worked? I'm not or? sure that's the case. Oh. I, I'm always kind of the one in the center. Mm -hmm. And um, that places me in an unusual position. So, so you were selected, but it was the same process. You same were selected process. by your colleagues, yeah. whether you're vice mayor or not, I guess, immaterial, you, were, you became right. mayor. No, I was not vice mayor. You were not vice mayor, and they, so they John selected Nelson you. John Nelson was. Oh, gotcha. Yes. John, yeah. an old colleague I served with in the, in the state legislature, but um, uh, I knew he had been on the council for many years before he was in the legislature, so. Yes, he was, he was an interesting person. Mm -hmm. he, he, I love John. We've had a great relationship all these years, uh, but he's an engineer mm -hmm. and he has that tunnel vision and to get him to compromise sometimes, I mean, he was pretty set in his ways, mm -hmm. but he always come around. He was a great guy to work with. Yeah. Well, and he, so, so he was vice mayor, but you became mayor, it mm -hmm. sounds like, and then you served for about a year, is that? Yeah, yeah. it was close to a year. Yeah. And then, um, Skip Rimza ran for mayor. Mm -hmm. Actually, I did too, second mm -hmm. time around, and I lost, mm -hmm. he won. Um, so I left the city and um, went to work for the sheriff, mm -hmm. which was a whole new educational experience. Uh, he was always excited that he employed a former mayor. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know if I could do anything or not. <laughs> but uh, he turned all the programs in all the jails under my supervision. And I think he had run for city council himself, correct? Yeah, but I think probably before you did. Yeah, and long lost. before I did, yeah. yeah. So, and it was a wonderful experience. I learned a lot, which has helped me since I've come back to be on the council. Um, that's where I really got the interest in animals mm -hmm. because I supervised the animal abuse detectives and the inmate program to care for all the animals. And I mean, it went so far as we had to revamp the entire jail. And the sheriff's office took abuse of animals very seriously, oh. which as an animal owner myself, and I know you are obviously, I'm very glad about that, frankly. Uh, that, that's a, there are horrible stories. There was one in the paper just a month or so ago. You just wonder what goes through people's heads. But, um, but I'm very glad that that was a focus, and it's been a focus of years. Well, we had over a thousand animals come, in, come through. I mean, everything you could think of. Uh, you know, birds, cats, the obvious ones, mm -hmm. uh, ferrets, ducks. <laughs> the first time I said an abused duck, sure enough. Uh. And uh, lots of horses, cattle, the wild pigs were an adventure, uh, goats, <laughs> I mean, orangutans. All abused animals. All abused. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's heartbreaking and, as you suggested, more than a little odd because you've got quite a menagerie there. Well, that's one of the reasons I left. I could not see another abused yeah. animal. So, but I was able to start the rehab program, uh, put a high school in for the juveniles being sentenced as adults, uh, did a lot of other programs throughout the jails, a lot of GED for adults. Um, so it has really helped me since I moved back here because many of the problems we face today are repeats of what was cycling through at that time. So uh, I know a little bit about substance abuse and I know what the inmates and the programs used to tell me, how they got started, what kept the addictions going. 
a lot many of them are homeless, and they counted on coming back to jail every so often to uh, get their meds straightened out, to get a meal, to get cleaned up. And it was kind of a planned vacation that they used to take. You could almost count on them. Um, but when I come back um, in eight, 2008, that's when the homeless problem really started. Uh, another year later, we went into another recession. I, I honestly, it's not me. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it that way, but now that you mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that they probably think I'm the cause, but. It makes so, me a little nervous. When are you term limited? Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> but at least I'd done downsizing <laughs> before, so I wasn't traumatized like some were. So you ran again in 2007, this mm -hmm. time in August election. Mm -hmm. Did you have a runoff then, or was it the same? Yes, you did have a I runoff. did have a runoff on that one. And then you took over in January of 2008. Right. So, and I got very involved in transportation, mm -hmm. and then I got very involved in water issues. So it's it's been a learning curve that never stops. Uh, I always laugh when I hear. Back in the past, uh, we had before I was on the council, I was the queen of the bond committee for storm sewers. <laughs> and so we got all this it's money. It's better than not being a queen of anything. That's true, uh, you know. that's true. And it paid off in the long yeah. run because I had all that education in mm -hmm. the process of why we needed the storm drains. And, and I should interject here, people listening at home might be like, wow, that's something you focused on. But sometimes the most mundane sounding thing can be some of the most important things too. I, I certainly found that at the city and uh, can really impact people's lives every bit as much as stuff that's oh. going on at the national level. If you didn't have garbage collection or what have you, or sewers, where would you be as a society? So, Well, and District 1 had a lot of flooding at that time. And it turned out the other council people did not want storm drains put in. So District 1 has a lot of storm drains, <laughs> just by miracle. Something thought. to hang your hat on, disproportionate uh, number of storm drains. Uh, but we started the recycling program. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big problems we had was uh, dumping in the desert. Mm -hmm. and you gotta remember, Union Hills was still undeveloped. Yep. And we had a lot of oil, gas, and whatever uh, dumped out there. So one of the things I come in with was the STOP program, Stop Trashing Our Phoenix. Well, that turned into the uh, uncontained trash pickup that we have mm -hmm. today that you and I support. The bulk trash. Yeah. The bulk trash. And uh, it has worked very well, in, at least in my district. I hope I it know. has in yours. Yeah. I use it, but I know my neighbors do. You see the piles. I was out in Tremonto knocking on doors this weekend, and everybody had their nice pile out in front of their yard and so forth, ready for the pickup. Yeah, so I'm... There so was one woman from Cal who just recently moved from California who did ask, what's with all the trash out in front of people's yards? And I, <laughs> I sort of explained, well, it's actually a program. They didn't just all collectively just decide to put the trash out. She, she didn't understand. They must not have it there. I don't know, but, uh, but I, it's an excellent program. That well, and it's well great used. at a side industry. Look how, how much disappears yes, before. Yes, it's fantastic. <laughs> if people can use it, more power to them. That's what I think, too. Yeah. So, so I met a lot of interesting people along the way. Mm -hmm. I, I did not meet Obama, but I met all the rest of the uh, presidents during the term. Screamed at Clinton. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's been a great experience. We were mayor three times, Yes. right? A few days at the end of Phil Gordon's term, and then obviously just finished up another term as mayor. So you mentioned some of your accomplishments. What would you say the biggest one is? You don't have to limit, limit it to one, I should add. If you got a couple, uh, that'd be after great. After school programs? Mm -hmm. I originally, I was the first one to insist we do that. Was that your first term or your second first term? term? First term, okay. So that's been around for 25 years or more? It has. And I think I'm the only district that doesn't have any. Huh. Isn't that ironic? I hadn't realized that. Yeah. So um, the boat trash, mm -hmm. um, the uncontained pickup, um, water. I've been very protective of water, mm -hmm. and I have been always a huge supporter of international air service, because I believe- Which has expanded, I think you said there was none when you first started, so. Right. And they said, oh, it'll take 10 to 15 years before you'll ever get a carrier. And the first trip out, the airport director and I went, 
and we were gone two weeks and went to, I think it was 12 different airlines in Europe. Mm -hmm. It got to the point you didn't know what country you were in <laughs> the same day. Uh, and met with all the airlines, introduced Phoenix, and they thought, Rattlesnake's Desert. I do have a few golf courses. That's all they knew about us. And we went to all the embassies, uh, talked about not only uh, trade, but talk about uh, tourism. How can we get more tourism to fly in here, to load those planes coming this direction? Right. And uh, we got British Air in, and then just as I left on the first time around, uh, Lufthansa flew in here for a while. Hmm. And then we got Canada and I think it won to Mexico. So we're still struggling. Yeah. We still haven't uh, any carriers from Asia, but we're still trying. I still fly about once a year to Asia with the aviation director and we had uh, three airlines, Tokyo, Beijing, Chengdu, and this year we're going to Taipei again. What's the most interesting trip you've had? Oh, I, uh, Moscow. Moscow. Hmm. When I was mayor the first time, <clears throat> the State Department asked if I would meet with the Russian So shortly delegate. after the fall of the Soviet Union? Yes. Actually, I was in Berlin when the wall came down. Really? Yeah. Was there uh, talking to an airline? <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, it was a pretty exciting night. <laughs> I remember that night. I was actually still in college. I remember it well, though, watching on TV. Yeah, well, I got to watch it. Out uh, yeah, my that's room. amazing. So, I, but the delegation came, and you know we were very receptive, very kind, and and they were trying to figure out democracy and how you operate a city under this new regime. And shortly thereafter, I was invited by the State Department to go to Moscow to be part of a training conference yeah. on dealing with how to implement our practices in Moscow. And they had all of the major, well, I think some of the minor city officials. About 25% of them were absolutely committed to communism. They wanted nothing to do with the new. The others were, were really interesting. One of the things, uh, they were interested in how we did the water, how we did streets, how we structured our government. And we talked a, a lot about volunteers. And I don't think any of them ever caught on why anybody would want to volunteer uh, to then, help So anybody. I guess in that system, I had never thought of it that way. Why would you ever? Mm. <laughs> but. It, it was really fun because, well, I was treated very well, and I turned out I was the conference. Mm -hmm. We were the only speakers. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent three days in a, <laughs> an auditorium talking to these people, but the mayor um, had to take me around, and it was before Clinton went over. Mm -hmm. So I got to see the museums, the lost art they just put in uh, an art gallery. So I was. I beat him, I got personal <laughs> tours, but it was fun because we had a motorcade everywhere we went, and I'd never been in that. And we had this junky looking car, and he leaned over and he said, don't worry, Ford Motor. <laughs> so, but it was well, that's just a, it's such a sea change from the Cold War that you, know, you lived through, I grew up with, and then here you are in 1993, 1994, yeah. something like that, you're over there being treated and taken around and so forth, like a big shot. That's, just, know, that's, such, I, a, that's such a strange change in such a short period of time. Just shows you never know what the future will hold. And I hadn't thought yeah. about how do you run a water department under communism and then who does it when you don't have communism anymore. That's yeah. fascinating, the issues that they would have had to deal with. Oh, it, it was just everything, you know, because they still had individuals It's amazing that sweeping. they were able to do it. Frankly. Oh, it truly and, and, is. May, and you know, not have the wheels completely come off. Oh, yeah, it, it really was. And, and especially when they didn't have 100% support. Right. Um, yeah, to your point that 25% of the population was still, nope, we want to keep things the way they were. Yeah, so, but it was, it was an exciting adventure. Huh. Uh, Moscow's the most interesting trip. I wouldn't necessarily guess that one, but that's fascinating. It was interesting because on the outside, most of the buildings 
were kind of a light golden color. Mm -hmm. And I said, is, is there a reason for that? And he says, only color paint we had. <laughs> okay. I guess, I guess there you go. If you're not gonna have democracy, you're not gonna have choices, why have different colored paint? I know, it, it was interesting. It's it the only color so paint different. we have. Uh -huh. So Sometimes the simplest answer is, <laughs> is the correct one. He, he was uh, great fun, very educated, uh, really dealing with a lot of issues that he wasn't comfortable with because mm -hmm. he didn't understand how to make the switches either, but super nice guy. Yeah, interesting, the mayor of Moscow. Mm -hmm. so, so you were mayor three times, certainly it had its challenges. Anything particularly stick out as like a big issue, a big intractable issue that you wish you had more time to work on or one that you, you know, wish you could go, go back and revisit? Um, I, I can't think of anything beyond um, from the last time, you know, I'm still <coughs> swallowing hard the issues we had to tackle then. Sure. It was pretty tough. Um, yeah, you had an interesting, what, about 10 month tenure? I mean, that was, you definitely, sitting from the cheap seat of vice mayor, <laughs> watching yeah. you have to deal with it, I, I felt your pain. I mean, it was definitely, definitely had its challenges all the way through. Yeah, it started off, we, the first time the budget was brought up, it failed. Mm -hmm. We to get you know what, it just test. shows how much stuff has gone on. I had forgotten that until we were doing the budget this year. Yeah, I mean it was, and then we and that's got- that's a pretty big thing, yeah. <laughs> to yes. say the least. And then South Central, mm -hmm. we had that big hearing. Yes. I mean, it's just like, and when we went like to forever streets. forever ago, and yeah. it's less than a year. Yeah, I know, yeah, it's amazing. It seems, it seems like 100 years ago. But. And we, and you and I worked real hard to get money to repair streets. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a fantastic win, I would argue too. Oh. You know, we, we, we changed, you know, um, pushed off, I guess we'll say, those, those two light rail lines. And, uh, you know, I was knocking on doors yesterday, last night, and, and people were talking about how happy they are to see the construction. They don't always know what prompted it, but they know something changed because they're seeing all the cones and, and all the improvements being made. It, it's been, I, I just tell you, at least in, in District 2, um, you know, it has been just so well received. Uh, when I sort of explain, here's what happened, people definitely thought that was the right policy choice. So I appreciate you guiding that through because that first one, uh, the Paradise Valley Mall extension that's now not probably gonna ever go through, I mean, that went, that passed eight to nothing. Or mm -hmm. was it seven to one? I can't, for, I forget, but it was. No, it, it was eight to I nothing. thought it was eight to nothing too, yeah. And it's, uh, that's an amazing accomplishment given where we had been. And uh, I think the benefits are already being seen by the citizenry. Oh, I do too. You know, that, that alone would make a 10 month tenure, you know, a wild success, I would argue. Oh, and it just continued on from there. We just <laughs> kept having major issues all along the way. Yeah, so. no, it was uh, definitely had its challenges. Uh, obviously we've got new, uh, New members, uh, just just elected, gonna be sworn in. This is a taped show, so they're gonna be sworn in in a couple days. Uh, I think you and I have not met one of them yet, uh, and you've now met the other. I have, you know, very briefly. Um, so we're gonna have new colleagues. Uh, I can't remember really in an analogous situation at the city council where you had new people, at least in my experience, and it sounds like yours as well, where you hadn't met before through nobody's fault, it's just the way it is. Uh, the legislature with 90 people is a little more common, but you know, you just you get used to anything. But you know, we've got the budget votes coming up. We've got still major issues. We've got another mayor's race next year. I know people watching this at home will be already, but mm -hmm. you know. And one of the council people. And one of the council. So Kay Gallego was elected um, to fill out Mayor Stanton's term. And so the normal election would have been next November. And mm -hmm. that's when the election's gonna be. So really, it's another 18 months and then we'll have another election. So it's kind of a crazy, it's been a crazy situation for the city over the last couple of years with so many people coming and going and so I forth. I know. Yeah. And actually we still get things done. It's nothing short of a minor miracle. It really is. It does show for those who like communism in Russia <laughs> and want it to change, <laughs> I would argue it shows that democracy works and can change with the times and big policy decisions have been made. Uh, big things have been accomplished on, on major issues. Whether I voted for them or not, we had big issues on water and light rail and the budget. I mean, that's billions of dollars. People don't realize the overall city budget, when you include the airport and the water department, is about four, four and a half billion dollars. So that's mm -hmm. like a board of directors of a four and a half billion dollar company on the New York Stock Exchange, and then you're changing members all the time or being short 
you know, a couple members because we had that experience as well. Yeah, we had, I had the challenge of eight. Eight, which people don't realize it makes it a lot harder to get your five because mm -hmm. you're starting off with what is effectively an automatic no because one person can't vote yes, they're not there. So you still have to get your five to get, mm -hmm. get something passed, so. I I'm just was very fortunate. Council members were very good and we don't always agree, but I always respect how you vote. Well, you I stick to your that. principles, you. and that's important in this day and age. I would argue I try not to surprise anybody, so I appreciate that very much. But I, I thought your mayoralty, I think that's a word, uh, <laughs> I thought it was outstanding. I really appreciated uh, the way you treated me, and just, again, there was no surprises. That's really all I'm looking for, you know, kind of what are we doing here, and where are you at, and then we kind of go from there. So I, I thought it was, really under really adverse circumstances. I can't emphasize enough to people at home, having been doing this kind of work for a while and having been on the council for seven years, uh, it was about as ramped up and tense. We had protests, we had shouting, we had lots of people in the audience who weren't necessarily happy with everything the city was doing. And I'm not even saying they should be by any stretch, but you know, it was definitely a ramped up environment uh, with a lot of people who had different points of view even on the council. Mm -hmm. I thought it went about as smoothly as it could go. Uh, and it didn't always go in a linear smooth list. You mentioned the budget from last year, but by and large, the stuff got done in the end. It did. I think that's a testament to you. So oh, well, we, we you. as citizens, all 1.679 million or whatever the last count was a few days ago, how many are Phoenicians there, they should all, you know, say thank you. I know people don't necessarily focus on the city council. They don't all know who mayor is. They don't certainly don't all know who their council person is. But for your 30 years of on and off again service, and then also obviously the time you spent just as a volunteer working on different issues, um, I'm a citizen, so I should count. My family's a citizen, so on behalf of us, thank you. And I really think um, that that folks. You know, if they had the time, I recognize people don't always have the time to, to focus on these things. I, I think they'd all say thank you as well, because the, the things you mentioned, the bulk trash is something that people use several times a year. It's really important for a lot of people. And I really think, uh, again, it doesn't get as much publicity, the, the issue with the animals. Horrifying stories. It almost brings a tear to your eye. Oh, and, you know, you, you fought that, and, and we applaud that effort. I mean, that was a great thing to take on. So I also did passed the ordinance for desert preserves. Desert preserve? Forgot all about that one. That's a big one. That's another big one that unfortunately we have to discuss on another show, but that's something that people use every day as well. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you being on, Delta. Thank you. And if you have any questions or comments, please call my office at 602-262-7445 or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district two. And we look forward to seeing you next time on The Issues.